The Phantom, I had a couple of plans for that book. Uh, the first one was to portray Harry as, uh, as the father. Um, what kind of father figure he would be. Um, in the previous book, uh, we had met Harry as the son, visiting his father on his deathbed. Uh, in this, Harry, um, Harry has to uh, try to um, save his own son, or uh, Rachel's son, um, who has been accused of uh, a murder, um, which he, um, uh, to a certain degree, admits, and the evidence are overwhelming. So uh, it's it's a really hard case, and it's personal. It's very personal, and I guess that has been uh, you know the journey that uh, we've been through with Harry uh, during this series is that things are getting more and more personal. I also wanted to portray Oslo, uh, the dark side of Oslo. I have done that in previous books uh, also, uh, but I think that this time we're going even deeper down into the cellar of uh, Oslo, um, investigating um, the drug scene in uh, Oslo. Um, quite detailed description, which is um, half uh, built on facts and half is uh, fiction, of course. But um, I've never done so detailed and thorough research ever for any of my books. Um, so um, Oslo, um, Harry, and Harry as a father, that was sort of the, um, uh, you know, the main uh, themes of uh, this book. Uh, but again, uh, the main goal is always to write something that's as, uh, you know, suspenseful and entertaining as it can be. I think that um, maybe the most, uh, uh, to me, uh, important moments happened during the research uh, when I was uh, more or less roaming the streets of downtown Oslo uh, meeting people I uh, was working in the in the you know uh, dope areas and in the prostitution areas uh, I did do some research also for a previous book um, uh, Devil Star uh, which came in handy for uh, for this book uh, but I think that uh, this time I, um, uh, I, to a certain extent, even put my personal integrity to a test. And um, I've never gone so far doing research for a book uh, ever. So I think that uh, without going too much in detail, I think that that was to me the most important parts of the book. And I think it also reflects uh, on the story that uh, this is probably... Um, uh, the darkest, grimmest book in the Harry Hole series so far. Technically, uh, I'm getting better as a writer, um, uh, and uh, this time I've I've tried to you know combine uh, um, heart and brain um, using uh, storytelling technique, uh, where I give myself certain restrictions uh, when it comes to um, um, how many points of views I can use in a story, how many, which persons are to tell the story and, and how you do it, that you, you sort of say that, okay, we have five people that, uh, that are going to tell the story and uh, just restrict myself to those points of view. And um, I also have um, a timeline here, which is going uh, from um, somewhere in the past and just describing a person who is dying, uh, like the last minutes, uh, where he's uh, uh, still alive and can tell his story. And we know from the start that he is going to end up dead. Uh, but we also know that he's probably going to reveal to us uh, what actually happened before he died. So he is sort of telling his, um, uh, his life story during those uh, last few minutes. And at the same time, uh, we have a present where Harry is investigating this case where a young man has been killed um, seemingly by his own son. Um, and we're not sure whether Harry is going to find out what happened because, uh, you know, the contract with the reader is always that the reader is going to find out what happened. But we already know that because we have the point of, of the view of the dying young man, uh, um, a drug dealer, 
and also a drug addict. Uh, his name is uh, Gusto Hansen, and he is he is sort of um, you know um, both a protagonist and an antagonist in this uh, story. He's really son of a bitch, and uh, um, but uh, but you know we we get to see life through his eyes so uh, that you know automatically in a way makes him a uh, protagonist uh, and i think i really like that aspect of this book that um you know um we we not only have harry's point of view and him as a protagonist but also this young uh, young guy who is you know it's 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 really hard to root for him him because he, he has done some really bad things but still um uh, I tell his story in a first person point of view and and that is you know almost impossible to to, to defend yourself against rooting for him in uh, at some level when I do research for uh, for my books I I almost always have you know a plan for what I want I, uh, I'm not doing research and then um, coming up with a story you know based on the research it's always story first story has always you know uh, the highest priority um, so I have a defined goal for my research and sometimes I I will even write the chapter um, without having done research and then interviewing persons uh, you know who, who knows this this area and ask them whether what I've written whether I can get away with it you know because uh, um, that is the way I want the story to go and sometimes they have to, you know, we have to correct details. And, you know, if my instincts have been really wrong, um, I have to delete the whole chapter and rewrite it. I think if, if I got the chance to, um, to write this book again, um, I can't think of any, anything, you know, that I wanted to change. Um, but then again, it's always like that with my books. I think that when I read it, uh, at the end, um, I think that's the way the book should be. I mean, you know, a sentence here or a sentence there, perhaps if I read it, you know, a couple of years later. But this book is a bit special because it was written uh, before what happened at uh, Utøya uh, at the 22nd of uh, July. Um, and there is um, three places where, where Harry comes back to, to Oslo. He comes back to Oslo. He hasn't been there for three years. So he's arriving after three years in Hong Kong and he walks the streets of uh, downtown Oslo and uh, looking at his city. And this is, you know, in time, it's placed at, um, uh, in September uh, 2011. It even says so in the book. Um, so, uh, you know, it is definitely just after the 22nd of uh, July, same year. And he is saying, um, everything is new nothing has changed and in a couple of months after the event i thought that that is horrible you know to say that because that is definitely not true everything has changed i wrote the storyline for harry uh just prior to writing uh the red breast may have been after the red breast but um some at some point in time uh, around the release of uh, the red breast I knew it was going to be a long series and I knew uh, I had to write a storyline for the whole life of Harry and uh, that's what I've done. So um, after that I more or less followed the plan. I didn't plan in detail every book and what was going to happen in every book um, but I knew more or less what was going to, uh, to happen to Harry and um, I've stuck to that plan and um, uh, what I can tell you as I've said before uh, is that uh, Harry is not going to have uh, eternal life. And when he's gone, um, I can give him one promise, and that is that he's not going to resurrect.